Today on After Drive, we turn our nerd lens on Singer Vehicle Design, the company that's been reimagining the air-cooled Porsche 911 since 2009, and the company we've been nerding out on since then. Watch this show. Come back. We're talking about the Porsche 911, and which is literally adored by millions of people on planet Earth. I think it is singularly the most important sports car in the world. Hey, so welcome back to After Drive. We're back in production uh, after a short absence, and we've got the regular knuckleheads, Mike and Zach from Classic Car Club Manhattan. And we also have an excellent guest, the guy that we've been waiting to get on the show for a really long time, Rob Dickinson, co-founder of Singer Vehicle Design, a company that we have been completely nerding out on. Every detail of these cars, the reimagination of the Porsche 911. I could just look at every detail of these cars every single day of my life. He was touching lug nuts earlier. I know. <laughs> I was, I was uh, doing that. I was doing that. Guys, this, this show's already gone in bad. Right? <laughs> it's amazing. Rubbing your lug nuts. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We're back. Been there, done yeah. that. Yep. Well, well, we are back. I mean, yeah. and, and what better way to be back than to bring uh, Singer on and to focus on not only Rob, but these cars here. One of them is new. We're going to talk about that. One of them is, well, actually, they're both sort of new, right? I mean, they're all... Uh, well, none of them are new because they're restorations. Well, but uh, but let me say uh, yes. initially, thank you for having me, guys. It's a pleasure and an honor to yeah. be here. Um, big fans um, at Singer of, uh, of, of you guys. Um, so, yeah. Uh, but, yeah, these are a freshly restored old Porsche 911s. Yes. Um, and uh, we're thankful to uh, their respective owners for, for lending them to us. I think we Absolutely. should have done this more than in front of us. Yeah, who wants yeah. to look at us? We're in the way. Next time. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> so, um, the Porsche 911, air cooled Porsche 911, is obviously something that is an object of desire for a lot of people. If you look at what a stock long hood or G body or any, basically almost any of them, even the 2.7s have been appreciating value just because it's a car that represents a kind of driving and a kind of uh, vehicle ownership well, that and, and because you're so away. influential you know we talked about them once and now now you everyone wants show. anything any 911 get your it's hands on effect. yeah well the yeah like, effect I, goes goes far <laughs> well you know we, we, we we're talking about the Porsche 911 and which is literally adored by millions of people on planet Earth I think it is singularly the most important sports car in the world um, and I think if any car on the planet deserves to be uh, revisited um, with the benefit of hindsight, uh, modern material science, um, postmodern design tricks, or uh, or, or, uh, or, or sensibilities, mm -hmm. um, and represented to uh, in many ways a new generation that never got to experience this spectacular piece of industrial design. In the, you know when it when it was when it first arrived on the in, in the world since 1964. Um, I don't know what it is. I mean, it's it, it um, it's it's a, it, for us. It's a it's a it's a relentless pursuit of the essence of why we love this old quirky German sports car, and that's and that's what our work is about. Yeah, it's amazing because there is a level of deconstruction as well as a level of addition, right? So right. It, it's sort of you're kind of as you were saying deconstructing that to find that essence of what why is it that we love that shape. Yeah. You know what? What are we responding to? And we love that. You know, we see that shape, and then. Well, I, you know, I, I, I have some. I have some ideas about that. I think. I think we're all responding to a very honest piece of design, and of course, that's what yeah. Dr. Porsche always said: that beauty comes through func functionality. And if the functionality is uh, is working, generally beauty will follow in some degree and in some people's minds. And of course, this this relentless uh, incremental development that Porsche, you know, lavished on this car. Um, allows uh, allows a, a, a huge amount of um, um, interplay between the different eras, um, if you like, and uh, mm -hmm. and, a, and, a, and a sense. I mean, I, I, I often say our work is is an attempt to to optimize. You know, we you know th this amazing this amazing 37 or 40 year period of the air cooled of the air cooled cars. Um, and uh, by taking what we consider to be the, the finest chassis, chassis, which is the there's a 964 right over there, which is an early 1990s uh, uh, vision of the car, which is the penultimate um, air-cooled 911 that Porsche made, and 
and taking it and taking some of the weight out of it, uh, taking some of the rubber out of it, um, turning up the volume in every tactile touch point, um, repatriating it with what we think is the most beautiful body of the 911, which was the Bootsy Porsche original, um, often called in the US the, the Long Hood or the F-Series uh, um, bodywork. Uh, render, it, render everything in the finest materials that man can, can deliver. Um, lavish it with um, high execution standards, hopefully. And, um, and re but the third thing, it has to go down the road like the best Porsche 911 you've ever driven. Right. And, that's what, and that's what we've, uh, we've really kind of sweated the, the details on. And that's, I think, probably that's what we're most proud of, how the, how the, car, how the cars actually drive. Yeah. Yeah, I mean, you know, in the show that we were talking about before, we, the, um, we did a 911 kind of rundown of the different generations. Well, the, nine, the, the 964 was, was, for us, is, is classic 911 because it retains the, uh, the semi-trailing arm, banana arm rear suspension, which, of course, uh, 911 had had it all the way up to that point. The final air called 911, the 993, went to a very sophisticated, at the time, multi-link rear suspension, which intrinsically changed the character of the car a little bit. So there's a sense that the back end of a, of a 964 platform is quintessential old school 911 with, with some, with some nod, a nod to modernity, um, uh, admittedly. But the front end is, 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 is reasonably sophisticated. It's got one of the finest power steering systems ever put on a car. And it's got an excellent ABS system. And this is about as far as the technology goes on our restorations. We're, these are fabulous things to have in a car that's as light and as fast as our, as our work uh, results in. Um, <laughs> and um, uh, so for us, it's a fine balance of finding that essence of what this real, this, this, this arc of, this, of, of the life of the air-cooled cars really was. So, so you know, we, we've got guys who've commissioned one of our cars. Um, who generally step from a GT3 RS, a lot of them are Porsche nuts, and uh, you know, they, 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 they think one, one of our restorations would work well in their collection, which is fantastic. We don't necessarily, I think if those guys um, went and drove down the road in a 1967 911, I think they'd adore it, but they would be quite shocked at how much of an antique that car yeah. is. And I think, I think um, there was a certain amount of pragmatism in, 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 in the way that we chose to, uh, to, to focus our work, but also the sense that you know, we have the, the, the ability to, to retain those fab, that fabulous essence of that 1967 car and also introduce through this massive level of performance we've been managed to inject into the, into the, into the, the work. Um, a sense of uh, uh, familiarity um, with, with more modern machinery. Um, and that's, for, for us, getting that balance right is absolutely uh, critical. And um, again, that's one of the things where I think we're most proud of, that the cars, you know, you can get out of 73 RS that we were talking about earlier on and um, still feel the 73 RS in this, in this car when you drive it. But you can also feel the the warm glow of a, of, a, of, a, of a GT3 911 as well. But it's, it's in the distance and it's hazy, but, there's, but there's a very, it's a very different feel, but it's, there's some familiarity there as well. It's a bit of a multi-generational drive in a way. Yeah, so, absolutely. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's an interesting one because you know, previously on shows, we've debated uh, and got, got engaged with a lot of viewers on you know, what is a perfect 911. And, and that could go on forever, you know? Like, we knew we were throwing ourselves in the fire bringing up that conversation <laughs> because, one, because the reality is, I mean, well, I think, I think you've finally maybe made it. <laughs> but, but if you look back at the generations, there, there's pros and cons to every one. And it's also a unique mark that, you know, everyone uh, adores it and has loved it for generations, but they also mm -hmm. feel compelled to do their own tweaks to it to, to suit the thing. And, and that's respected, you know, like a lot of collector cars, as soon as you touch it and change something from the way the factory is, you've ruined the value but I th and I think, I think the security away. Absolutely, yeah. but I think there's a very, uh, very good reason for that. And I think a lot of uh, the, the, the reason you're talking to me is, and the reason our company exists is because I'm a firm believer that I feel exactly the same as you and your other view yeah. and, and, the, and the viewers about the importance of this car. And it all boils down to one thing, that when I can't get to sleep at night, I used to, fantasize about if I could only have one car, what would it be? 
<laughs> and that is, you know, what's your, what's your ideal garage? No, you've got one car yeah, and that's, that's all fun. you get. And of course, my love of DB4 GTs and Ferraris and everything else goes out the window because they're not 911s. You can't take it yeah. to the track at the weekend and then drive it to work and put your kids in the back and go shopping in it. And it's a 911 and it's the most important sports car in the world. So it's got to be a 911. So if it's got to be a 911, it's got to be a fucking special one, right? Yeah. And that's what that is. That's my idea of what a, my ultimate 911 would have to be if I could only have one car. Yeah, that's, well, that's, I mean, that's where that's come from. And I think to go to your point about why other people fiddle with their 911s, I think they're all chasing their ultimate. Exactly. If I can only have yeah. one car. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, 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 I, and I'd say that also is part of what fuels the passion because the car from the get-go was challenged. You know, the, the architecture was wrong for the way a car should be and every step of, well, <laughs> the, the engine hanging off the back end. You know, no, the, I, I don't it, think it was wrong. <laughs> it, 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 per, it posed challenges. And every, posed challenges in what? In, in performance? Performance and handling. I mean, you get grip. 356 and the yeah. early 911s were winning every, every, every race on planet Earth. You can, it's Maybe difficult. Now, you, you, it's, it's a little it, bit what, of a challenge. <laughs> Well, it, was, it, it wasn't wrong, it was incredibly right, and, it, and, they, and Porsche got it writer and writer and writer and writer <laughs> yeah. over the next 50 I, years, yeah, right? I, I mean, it's... It was, it was maybe the right choice, and it, it took that long to make it perfect or near Yeah, perfect. and I think Porsche is still doing that. I mean, right. these GT3s and, you know, the, the work that Andreas Proening is doing at Porsche now is, wow. is just it, uh, it, it, exactly, it's spectacular. But it, it, it's, like it's, it's sort of like bumblebees flying. Like, there's a lot of people that say that shouldn't work, you know? Yeah. But they've proven it to work and yeah. proven it to get better and better and better with little evolutions of the technology around the car. Yeah. And, and I think what's made uh, the 911 enthusiasts so passionate about it is with their own cars, they get to engage that a bit. Like, okay, we get this, I'm gonna get these headers, I'm gonna do this, you know, European suspension setup, change sway bars, and all of a sudden I have a car that is a lot, much improved over what I started with. Yeah. And, and you, what you've done is sort of set the benchmark at the very, very, very top of that. Well, and, I, and, and, and I very think- very kind of you to say so. <laughs> I, I, I wouldn't necessarily agree with that, but, but it, it's, <laughs> it's, certainly, it's certainly one interpretation of where you, could, where you can take sure. it. And, and, um, well, for guys like us, I guess, you know. Well, yeah, I mean, you mentioned Andreas Preuninger from, from GT, right? So, so at Weissach, at, at Porsche, you know, they're the, they're the race shop, right? They do the, the race cars and the enthusiast cars and the, you know, the, t the top of the line in performance at Porsche. Now, they're doing a car, they're doing the 911R now, which is sort of suspicious, I don't want to imply anything, but it's, it's as stripped down looking compared to the car that it has most in common with the GT3, GT3 RS, if, you, if it's the motor, right? Cause it's got the four liter. Mm -hmm. And yet it's, it's, a, it's a manual <coughs> and it's got, it doesn't have the tail. It's, it's very sort of uh, sparse and very elegant. Looking. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. I mean, it, 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 it's, it's, I mean, I think <laughs> it's a testament to the, uh, to the sophisticated understanding that Porsche have in, in, the, in their motorsport department, and principally Andreas Preuninger, I think, who is, I think, an absolute freaking genius, and uh, and singularly one of the most important people at Porsche right now, um, for maintaining the flag for what Porsche. Yeah. Um, Porsche is a multifaceted company now. Of course, it is. It has to be, but thank goodness for guys like Andreas Preuninger at Porsche that have that have stuck a, a flag in that. You know, this is. This is our core business, and these cars are going to be the best cars in the world. And, 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 and you know, the, the RS obviously has to be the fastest, so it's got the huge rear wheels and the flappy paddles, and it sure does go the fastest, but you know, their sophistication realizes that they understand that that's not necessarily what everybody wants yeah. in, a, in, a, in their 911, and therefore they, to, you can dial it back, you know, you can, can you keep turning the volume up to 11 and then 11 and then 11, next year's 11, next, next year's 11. And I think, uh, I think they've done a, it's a, I just think, I just wish there could be more of them. Well, yeah. that's the problem, yeah, I mean, it's, it's. I'm sure they could have sold 10,000 of those things. Right, I mean, they could have sold as many as I think that they built, but it's yeah. only gonna be a couple hundred, I guess. No, it's, so. it's, yeah. it's, I, it's I also a think it's immediate a, classic, an I, immediate I, classic. I think it's also a response to what customers want and partially from the vision that you've created. Um, I think right after we crawled out of a bad economy, and not to say it's great, but there suddenly became this arms race of technology and mm. automotive development overall. Suddenly everything had a sequential gearbox and everything was these numbers. And as things got 
uh, more exciting on paper. I think they became less exciting for drivers. Mm -hmm. um, at the Classic Car Club here, we stack, a, stack plenty of cars with more than 600 horsepower. And me personally, I'm just speaking for myself, I don't need 600 horsepower. Mm -hmm. I just like that sort of, I just like to feel like, a, like I'm driving this car sure. and if it hits the wall, it's my fault. And mm -hmm. if it doesn't hit the wall, that was also my, my doing and that a computer didn't do it. Sure. And you're starting to see that sort of, as you described, that more analog feel again, like in the R yeah, or in the GT4. It, and I think that, I personally, I think that these have inspired that return to the art of the drive again. Mm -hmm. I like to think of it like that. Yeah, the performance well, number is so off the charts that the difference between these 15 different 600 horsepower cars, is it doesn't matter anymore. The only way you can actually differentiate them is on the driving experience. So, you, you know, run out of your own, people, your own ability to put a car down. Right. So, so, so if they want to differentiate, they can take a page out of the book of looking back at history and what, what, what the cars really inspired people yeah. or the modern restorations of cars that kind of capture all that more. Yeah, yeah I, th I think, I think um, the, you know, how, what's the next P1 or the next, um, uh, you know, LaFerrari, how fast is it going to be? I mean, is it going to be 2,000 horsepower, 3,000 <laughs> horsepower? Uh, you, it can't go on. It can't go on forever. Um, the road, we're, you know, the roads are getting more and more. We're all been late today. I mean, it's, it's, it's madness, right? It just yeah. doesn't make sense. And of course, the fact that these companies build these cars is fantastic, isn't it? Yeah, really. I mean, no one's complaining that there's this immense amount of engineering talent and and noble material science is going to, into these amazing cars. I mean, I watched, uh, you know, the, 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 the Apex, uh, enthralled with, with, your, with your film, guys. It was just, just, and thank God for Christian Koenigsegg and Horacio Pagani and, and, and Frank Wallace at, at, at Porsche. For, and I, I hope they continue to do crazier and crazier things, but that does not, that does not discount the fact that that isn't what necessarily all human beings who love cars right. want, right? Yeah. They, they want to feel, as you said, like in control, tactile delight of being in control, master of a, of a machine. Um, and of course, how you feel about the bespoke nature of the car that you have had built for you. I think that's going to become increasingly important. That sense of, um, I don't want to use the word customization, but because it's, it feels a bit cheap, but that sense of, this car has been built for me. Yeah. I can't tell you uh, in the experience we've had in the last five years how important that is to our customers, um, our clients, and uh, how we are starting to learn that it's, the, it, it's one of the things that uh, I should have I realized this that fascinates um, these amazing guys that, that, that take the commission uh, uh, one of our restorations, that they can dive deep, 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 and we can restore their car in any way they like within certain parameters. And, and, and that is part of the journey. The, build, the, the, the process of restoring and rebuilding these cars to something that is different and hopefully um, absolutely to their requests is the joy of what we're doing, it really well, is. That's, that's an interesting part of this. Is it, I, so I come in off the street and how does that process work? Where, I mean, how do I work with you to commission a car. We, I wish we, that we have a chat and some, yeah, and we, the, the, you know, the, 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 the immediate first questions are, how do you intend to use the car? Always a good question to start off with. I mean, and, but really, how do you intend to use a car? No, but really, how do you intend to use the car? <laughs> and then we, then we usually get down to how it's really going to be used, and then we have it, and then the discussion starts. And, yeah, like what's and the it, sixth or seventh question? Uh, how do you really want to use the car? <laughs> um, but it, it, and of course, that sometimes doesn't matter. They, 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 it's, it's, I've, I've heard that uh, I don't intend to use it much. It's going to be a car that I'm going to look at a lot and maybe drive on Sundays. But I want it to be so freaking sexy or so this, so that, yeah. that because that's what I want, and that's fine. Some people are going to use it at the track, so they, their, 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 their requirements are, are guided towards a ultimate performance, and some people. They're gonna, you know, take it touring and go up to Napa with it, and they want a sunroof and they want air conditioning, they want a beautiful sound system and everything else, and we can do all that. Yeah. So it, it's, 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 it's that main. I, I would say all our restorations follow this blueprint of that amazing duality of the 911, which yeah. it, which it must have that sense that it can do everything, and that what is what you can't do that in a Ferrari, and that's what makes the uh, the Porsche 911 and the 356 and everything that Porsche have done in their sports car realm, really, even the, the Cayman, so freaking special. 
Um, I mean, yeah, yeah. I, like I, I was excited flipping through uh, some your gallery last night to see <laughs> to see to see the custom booster seats. Like I, yeah. I've got two kids, uh, and you have the most beautiful booster seats I've ever seen. Like fit perfectly in the little cavity. Yeah. That's actually Amazing. a subwoofer. All oh, right. But it looks a little bit like a booster seat. Well, I'm, I'm, when I you build mine, it's going to be <laughs> booster <laughs> seats. I can easily become a booster seat. Yeah. I was say, I I just really enjoy going through the website because it's it's all sort of the same car, but they're all so radically different. And you can almost you can learn a lot about the person who ordered that particular car. And I go through yep. and I'm like, it's great, but it's not for me. I would definitely have a pint from the with the guy in Brooklyn. <laughs> the purple interior, fuck yeah, that's, yeah, that's my guy right there. Yeah. You know, I'd have that one. And he is, he's also he is indeed awesome. And so you would want to have a, a yeah, a, a, and that's just, a, a just kind of really super cool about them. Yeah, well, and of course that's part of the big the thrill for me is we're meeting these amazing people yeah. who have come from all sorts of different backgrounds, all sorts of different parts of the world, and they have this one thing fabulous in thing in common. It's the same thing at the class. And, 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 it, and it's bond, 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 bond. We have yeah. a great time. Hopefully we keep we keep these guys well. You know, we look after these guys like kings, like family, and they become real friends. It sounds a bit yeah. corny, but no, but, we, but they do. It's great. Not not to make parallels, but at the Classic Car Club, we have our 450 members, yep. and they're all radically different. Mm. We have entrepreneurs, <coughs> we have financiers, we have we have all walks of life, and they have one thing in common: they just love cars. Yep. And so you can have a drink at our bar on a Thursday night, and you could meet another king of industry or a regular guy or whatever yeah. it is, and the ice Fantastic. is broken. Fantastic. Same thing. Yeah. Well, I, you know, I'm glad that you know in that realm, you know, in that whole vein of of all the cars that have been restored to this point, right, that you've done. Finally, there's a coffee table book, right? Because uh, oh, yeah. my friend Mike Harley uh, yes. helped, uh, wrote, I guess, wrote with you, with you guys yes. did that. And some of the photography is great, but I love looking through the, the photos of all the different cars, all the different city names of all the cars, right. and just sort of going through that catalog and just saying, wow, this, I mean, w when you look back now, I mean, having, yeah, pages of those cars. Um, it's exhausting to, to, to look it, back on it. Yeah. it. I mean, do you do the thing where, like, when we sometimes we look back on the show and go, "What the, what the hell were we thinking?" But, but well, like, <laughs> a little, a, 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 just a, say no. Just say no. <laughs> don't, don't, don't let him. Do <laughs> a little bit. I mean, I, I just look back at. I mean, putting the book together was a, was a. In many ways, as terrifying as the last seven years has been, seven years has been because I realized that. You know the, the 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 huge amount of effort that went into where we, the reason I'm probably sitting here and and what a massive massive team effort it has been. Yeah. As a, as a, the back of the book has got about a thousand names. Or I tried to name check everyone who has contributed in the, in some way to 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 our company being you know wherever we may have ended up right now. I don't know where that is, but. Uh, in, in many ways, I'm, I keep my head down and everything goes on and I come up for air sometimes and go, oh shit, this is a bit crazy and then I put, then I put my head down and get on with it again. So yeah. I don't know where we, really where we are in the, in the scheme of things, but, the, but the, 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 what amazes me is that we energize this amount of people, yeah. inspired them or whatever word you want to use, to, 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 to make this happen. And this is a whole bunch of extraordinary people. Yeah. It's, it's a bit of a, the, a, bit of a microcosm of, of the 9-11 overall because for like I said half a century taking this really great ingenuitive design and trimming away to just find the perfection every mm -hmm. time and you have sort of your own mm -hmm. shortened version of that yeah. start up this platform elevate the hell out of it and then keep on refining those things yep. and you keep on going through engine Absolutely. development and everything Absolutely. else it's yeah. kind of it's, it's no it's it, 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 it's, yeah. a, it's a great point it's and uh, it, you know we have a list on our wall of all the things that we're looking to improve on the car yeah. Um, and uh, of course, when we improve p parts of the car, we'll, we ship those parts out to the customer so that their cars become better. Huh. And uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a constant part of the development of, of, of our work to, um, to, improve, you know, to improve things. Yeah. So why don't we talk about this, w these two cars here. Um, you know, the, I, first of all, I'm a, I'm a massive fan of flat gray anyway. Yeah. Um, but this is also the four liter. Yes. Yes, this is, this, is, this, is, this was our next kind of big idea. We're, we're working with, our, our 3.8 liter engines were developed by Cosworth in, in, in uh, California. Obviously an English company, but had an outpost in California. 
Unfortunately, they closed their doors a few years ago and we, we needed to find another engine building partner. We went and we found on our doorstep a company called Ed Pink Racing Engines, um, uh, which is a fantastic company with much storied history. Um, and those guys developed this four liter engine for us, which is um, a masterpiece of, a, of, a, of an air-cooled engine taken to its, in many ways, its logical conclusion with, with, with some of the constraints of an air-cooled engine. Um, with a lot of racing technology in it, but mm. not a racing engine. It's got cats, it runs on crappy gas in California, and it is uh, just a jewel of an engine. And we're very, very, very proud of it and very proud of, of, of Ed Pink's work um, on, on, on the builds of these cars. And, and, and it's, the most, it's the most specified engine that we, uh, that we, that we do at the moment. Um, and um, our goal with it was to was to come up with something which had both the high rev firepower of, yeah. a, of, of the early 911s that we love, especially the 2.2s and the 2.4s with tiny, reasonably tiny little pistons that were that could race up to you know very quickly. You know, with a big four liter capacity, it's often tough to get these en these engines to rev as fast as the early en earlier engines. So we've used uh, extravagantly lightweight pistons and conrods and everything in the in the in, in, in the builds, all custom made to our, to our specifications. Um, but also with a mighty mid-range punch and, and, and torque. Um, so you really do have the best of both worlds. You have this fabulous up to, I mean the engines will rev, hap rev happily up to eight, eight and a half grand. Uh, we we we, uh, we redline them at seven two because that's where they're making their, 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 uh, their mo most power. Um, but it also has this amazing ability just to chug around town effortlessly without having to drop down a gear and it, it for the first time our restorations feel properly fast um, with a four liter engine. Uh, road and track did a, it's 3.3 seconds to 60 miles an hour wow. and it's the it was the fastest uh, ninth fastest road car around road, around Laguna Seca ever wow. which was like yeah, that's <laughs> mind-numbingly yeah. driven spectacularly by a guy called Lee Keen. Sure, um, friend of the show. Friend of the show, I think, <laughs> yes, and um, who r drives for David McNeil's WeatherTech uh, team, and it was David McNeil's car that we that uh, wow. so we thank David for it for lending us that car, and uh, and it was like we were you know the guys at Road and Track were like yeah really <laughs> it went for, and it was it was it was humbling it was it was like Jesus that's, that's okay Good for you. so it was, it was it, it's a it's a it's a real. It, 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 we were talking, weren't we, before we, we, we came on, Mike, that, uh, that you know, maybe a lot of people who write about our stuff uh, tend to make it about track, uh, a lot about the track. I think for me that uh, the road and track piece was the defining piece for me and that obviously it's magazines called Road and Track, so that goes to the duality, doesn't it, to a little yeah. bit, but um, it was like a definitive track test of, 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 one, of, our, of one of our restorations and it, was, and it was done properly and with the right timing equipment and almost, you know, uh, draws a line under the sand as to, in the sand as to, as, to, uh, as to how good these ancient old cars really can be with the, with yeah. the right stuff in them. Um, and, and everything you touch, I know you put a lot of work in this, like the, the feel of the shifter, everything you touch is gratifying every time you do it. Even if you're stuck in traffic in Manhattan going 30 blocks, shifting yeah, from neutral nice. to first 50 yeah, times, nice, there's it? something so, you can enjoy about so it. So you, know? Saying, you know what, I never got lazy and said, fuck it, I'm just keep it. <laughs> it's too much of a, like you know I, I learned today I know a lot about 911s I did not know there are six different clutch packs that mm -hmm. one can have yep. both shifter and plate so yep. that's probably I don't know what, what what that curve is on math yep. I don't do the math but right. I just thought like geez like it's the right amount of feel it doesn't why does it have to be a workout it shouldn't be a workout it's, it's just it's, enough for resistance it's just that we've had the opportunity to test them all yeah. <laughs> and to <laughs> test them, the test all and the, and and, and we, you, you know we've they existed we, even? Well, because we've we've hired some really good people who know their shit, and it, and 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 and, 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 and it and it's so we you know we 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 had cl we had clutch sessions yeah. where we'd all stand around saying, well, yeah. what do you think of this one? Just took notes. Well, you know, yeah. why is it? It's why is it one like of those this? mysteries? To yeah. me. Why like the you know some of the more hardcore car guys, the bigger my left leg has to get. Yeah. <laughs> I'm a skinny yeah. skinny guy. Man. I, I enjoy well, it. Well, I mean, I think a lot of it is you know, people not taking the time to do that, you know, yeah. like, it's like, but oh, I, 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 I added performance, 
I need a heavier clutch. I'm going to buy this over engineered thing because I don't, I don't have it's time enough to think about it and refine yeah. it to the point it's where it works. So it all goes down to that, you know, fit for purpose thing, doesn't yeah. it? What, yeah. what, how's the car going to be used and and it, it, does it hit the sweet spot where it can do that and it can also do that and it's yeah. pretty like, good at both. Like I mean, I, that's that's the compromise. Like in, yeah. unless we're racing or drag racing, I don't need a clutch that's going to hold a 5,000 RPM launch. So don't give me one. And, and Especially and, and, 911s are terrible drag yeah. racing cars anyway. Yeah. It's, yeah. They, 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 it's just not so, their fault. So yeah. is, is, if I ask you what's next, is that a relevant question or is it sort of con incremental changes you guys are going to do or is there anything that you're, you want to do that you haven't done yet? Jeeps. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, another kind of car or is... Or is yeah, what well, happens if you run out of 964s? <laughs> uh, can I suggest the Volvo P1800, perhaps? <laughs> we're not doing anything revolutionary. I, you know, we're, we're, we're restoring and we're modifying old cars. It's been done in this country for many years, uh, sometimes well, sometimes not so well. And, and we've, we've, you know, we've, we're, we're doing the same thing, maybe to a, a nut job kind of level that maybe hasn't been done before and, and you know the idea that we you know that the, the, we put lavish the same attention on weighing our con rods as we do on considering our leather I'm not sh sure that there's a comp too many companies out there that worry as much as about both ends of the spectrum as we do but um, yeah there's a lot gonna happen from Singer I can't really tell you too much about it now because it's I'm not allowed to apparently. But um, <laughs> but the, but next next year mm. next year. You're buying up the, <laughs> buying up the Volvos. Like and I don't, I'm not trying to be coy. Maybe a 240. No, no, I'm not trying to be coy do, at do all. Do the 240s, but, but well. It's well, gonna. I, it's, I mean, uh, sing, it Singer will be all about Porsche. Yeah. Forever. Well, whatever it is, we can't wait to see it. Rob, yeah. thanks for coming on. I mean, we've been wanting you to come on for so long. We just I'm thanks. glad it worked out finally. Thanks, um, guys. Absolute pleasure. Yeah, great to see you. Cheers. Thank you. Good to be back. Thanks, right. brother. Good to be back. Very good. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So that's After Drive for today. Uh, thanks for watching. We will be back this season with more shows. Keep watching, and we'll see you next time. Bye.